Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, on this week's show, it's Festive Week, bringing you our Real Health Christmas Gift Guide. If you're struggling to find the perfect gift for your fitness fanatic friend or family member, well, we have everything you could possibly need right here on this week's show. From the best tech wearables to stocking fillers, we have gifts that are all price points and that everyone will love. Joining me to bring you their top suggestions are Adrian Weckler, Irish Independence Tech Editor, and Susie O'Neill, owner of Irish Cosmetics Company AU. Adrian and Susie, welcome to the show. How's it going? Thanks for having us. Thanks, Carl. This is our first ever tag team episode. We're remotely recording with two people on the show. We're very excited. It's all about the simple pleasures. So it is Christmas. People are looking for festive gift guides for health and for tech. And so we brought you two on board to give us your top tips. Susie, I'm going to start with yourself. Uh, give, us your, give us your number one uh, your number one top tip. Well, the number one that I can't be without when I go out running is my phone holder. Um, they're a very simple little thing. I think a great stocking filler. They're about, what, 20 euro or so. And it just, for me, I can't be out without my music or a podcast. And um, it goes everywhere with me. So that's my first one. Great. And is there any particular brands or, or types of phone holders you recommend? Well, this one I just got on Amazon, to be honest. I think, you know, it's like they have them all different sizes for the different phones, different size phones you have. And this actually has a really handy little key holder as well in the back. So that's handy if you're parking up somewhere and then you can just throw the key in the phone in and off you go. Can I offer an alternative to that uh, phone holder? I'm, <laughs> be the re- I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be a reply guy here now. <laughs> um, so if you get... Uh-huh. One of the advantages to the Garmin smartwatches, as opposed to Fitbits or, or others, is most of them, you can actually download Spotify uh, onto them, which means... I have a watch that phone. does that, and I've never done it. Now, when you say a watch, what do you a mean? A Garmin watch. I have a Garmin okay. watch that, that has a Spotify thingy on it, and I've never it's actually... It's very handy. It. To me, it's actually one of the reasons why you buy one of the lower-end Garmin uh, smartwatches rather than, say, for example, a Fitbit. Now, the Apple's watch can also do it now with both Spotify and Apple Music. So just letting you know, you don't have to bring your phone. I do have th- that online, actually. Um, but I find that... This is just mine now, but I have the Apple Watch, and I find Spotify can cut out on me i my apple oh. music works i have to download the music onto mm-hmm. it but then yeah i've had a little bit of trouble with my uh my spotify but again i'm not techie like you so maybe maybe i'm doing something yeah wrong. i i i think that plus i think a lot of people and i'll put myself into this category i'm so glued to my phone that i feel a bit guilty if i go for a run without it for the for, for, for god of the fear that i could have an, an instagram notification that i miss or a text message that i miss which is crazy. well <laughs> the goal the gold standard which bridges the divide between all of our issues here i think is probably the uh, the apple watch cellular okay so that is the watch where you can actually go out and it will take your calls it will do everything you don't need your phone and you can stream your music at the same time unfortunately in ireland none of the operators support apple watch cellular so let's leave that for another podcast okay so adrian your your first top pick is uh, you're going with that what you're going with that kind of the, the watch option yeah i'm going to offer fitbit's new charge 5 for a couple of reasons it's not ideal for everybody but if you know the fitbits and i'm sure you do uh, you definitely do their main branding was more that they were kind of slim, discrete devices, that they weren't giant hulking computer screens on your wrist. Now, what they've done with this one is they've taken that slim band idea and they've made it a little bit fatter and they've added a color screen and better battery life. And it does more things. So, for example, it can take an ECG measurement as soon as the EU uh, le- lets it do that. It can do, it has GPS on board uh, and it has this stress measurement skin temperature feature that Fitbits have had for a while, but it's still smaller than most Garmin's or or even the Apple Watch. So if you do want to keep that element of discretion, uh, it's pretty good. It's 159 euro at the moment. That's, I was just going to ask you that in terms of price mm. point. Uh, that's pretty good in terms of price. It is. It normally goes for 179 at the moment in the Black Friday sales. And I'd say from now until Christmas, it'll be around 159 euro. There are a couple of price points when it comes to smartwatches and fitness watches. As you know, uh, as both of you know, if you want to go really pro, you end up with things like the Phoenix 6 Pro or Garmin. You end up at over four or 500 euro. No one, and myself included, right? I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I love techie stuff. I love techie stuff. And every now and again, I... I, I 
look at new watches and things like that. Mm -hmm. I never use all the functions. And as I got older and slightly more sensible, I've actually copped on and I don't buy the really expensive. I've got a Garmin 45S as my, my current yep. sport, which is like 170 or something like that. And it's really basic, but it has GPS and it does exactly what I need to. Uh, and it's, and I, I find I never use all the fancy functions on the really expensive ones. Well, there's one good reason. I mean, I'm just seeing as you mentioned it. Here's the here's Garmin's big uh, six uh, solar. Oh, yeah. Okay? yeah so yeah. that actually has a little solar ring around the side of it. Now, the thing about that is it has a lot of functions. It has maps and golf courses and skiing and loads of music and all that kind of stuff. But the real reason you get it is because it's bulletproof and it has a battery that goes to almost 20 days if you don't use a lot of its functions. So even if you don't want to use a lot of the fancy stuff, you get almost three weeks battery life out of it. So that's a reason for spending more. Before I come back to you, Susie, I'm going to show you one more watch purely because I have it. I already got it recently. And I'm very proud of it. It is, can you see my one? There we go. It's a Y Things smartwatch. And the reason I bought it is the battery life is unbelievable. Now I don't use it when I run, right? So I only use it for as, a, as on my wrist and a trackery thing and my sleep patterns and stuff like that. But actually uh, I've charged it once and I think I got it about three and a half, nearly four weeks ago. Like the battery life's off the charge. Because one of the big things for tech for me was always been the battery life in terms of, I've had an, I've had a, an Apple watch. I found the, one of the original ones and it was short on life, but that's a really, really good one in terms of battery. Um, which has been really good. Anyway, enough about me. Yeah. Now, it's easy, back to you. Chat, we're going to pull it back to... Yeah, they can be. So let's pull it back to... Um, we're going to pull it back to exercise stuff now. What's your second one? So my second one are uh, recovery boots, which I know is a bit of a funny one to say as a Christmas present, but I use Renfro uh, recovery boots after my long runs and that. I got them on Amazon. They're 79 euro. And for me, they just... I know you can buy ones. They have them from... The 79 up to a thousand euro but these guys um they put a lot of pressure onto the legs and they basically like they'll constrict the blood flow and then allow a fresh blood supply to the muscles so you don't get that same you know fatigue in your legs after a long run or it's really brilliant for anybody who's um like bad circulation or on their feet all day just to keep the blood flowing around around the legs and i certainly have found that they have been brilliant through all of my training um, so I think they're a really good present for somebody who mightn't buy it for themselves, but that is doing a lot of training at the moment and could do with them. And chat us through for people listening in who haven't, I've seen them before, one or two friends who use them, but for people who haven't used them, do you literally come in from your long run, pop the massage, the recovery boots on and sit back and watch telly? Yeah, pretty much. They're like space <laughs> boots. I do have them here. I am, I, I'm not sure you'll be able to see them properly, but I brought them just to show you. So one part goes over your thigh and then this goes down around your calf and your foot um, and it gets really really tight but they're so nice like it's so relaxing because even if you've done a really hard workout you know sometimes you might have like fidgety legs it feels like your legs are almost pulsing so this just totally relaxes them and like i would sit on and put two or three programs on in a row um of the of the massagers just while i'm watching the tv at night time and honestly you wake up the next day and feel like you could just go and do that same long run again you just don't have that same fatigue and same just feeling of tiredness around the legs. So they come, the ones I have don't have a heating um, setting on it, but you can get them with heating settings as well. And you can get ones that are uh, like a, basically a, you step into them rather than the boot like I have that you strap on each area. You can get them that they just pull up all the way as well. So they can do in and around the hips for anyone who might get tight glutes and things like that as well. Okay, so it's like your own personal massager for your legs, basically. Yeah, they're very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Great. Okay. Great. A, re a really cool kind of slightly left to center, but really funky in terms of recovery. Great tip. My friends who use them and absolutely love them. Adrian, over to you. What's number two for you? Well, number two is a phone and it's uh, Google's Pixel 6 and Pixel Ooh. 6 Pro. And the reason I've gone for this one is because you it, Google was known for making fairly cheap good value phones. So it was always like 399 euro, 499 euro, but the Design was bland, crap, dull. You plonked one of those down on a table in a pub and it could be anybody. You wouldn't know whose phone it is by the end of the night. They've changed, they've changed it up. They put a really powerful chip in it. They've got a fantastic camera in it and they've kind of added a little bit of premium design to it. So oh, yeah. See it oh, there. that's nice. So it's, it's kind of slightly different. I mean, you, you'd sort of say, well, like it or not, but it looks it looks different. Anyway, they've upgraded everything and it's a really decent premium phone, still at a pretty decent price, 649 euro, which by the levels of what you would pay for a flagship phone, an iPhone, a Samsung, 
um that's a modest it's about, ha- it's about half price i got i got the new the uh, iphone well, 13 it's, pro and it's, it's half like- price if you're if you're buying like a <laughs> tesla phone like you have there the iphone 13 <laughs> pro max um but it's most flagship phones cost around between 800 and 950 euro uh, a lot of people don't buy them outright obviously they get them on uh, operator deals but the, the clever way to do it is actually to buy it up front and get a low cost mobile deal one of the 15 euro deals from gomo or clear or, or 48 but anyway so google pixel 6 6 149 euro okay fantastic susie back over to you number three what's your third uh, your third recommendation for santa sack this year okay so my third one is um it can be a splurge or you can get it on a more affordable level as well so it is actually a techno gym spin bike so i know carl you're a fan of techno gym as well but i um just in love with my bike that I have uh, from Techno Gym. It's the, so you have your spin classes, you can do live classes, the pre recorded classes, you've got your Netflix, your YouTube. Um, now, that is obviously on the higher end of the price scale. It's about, you know, nearly 3,000 euro for that one. But my brother in law did buy a basic spin bike on Wish, would you believe, um, a couple of months ago for 200 euro. And it is an amazing spin bike to have at home. So, what he does is just puts his iPad up in front of it because there's no screen on it. Mm-hmm but he gets that same workout. He does the workouts from YouTube and things like that. And I just think it's a brilliant one to have at home, especially as we're coming into the winter now and it's harder to get out um, with the weather kind of getting worse or people, you know, might be working while it's daylight. To have something like that at home is great where you can have it in the sitting room in front of the TV if you want and you still get your workout in. Um, so I just think that there, I, I couldn't be without it now. I found that it's made me so much stronger and it's just a great cardio workout as well to add into whatever other training you're doing. Yeah, I think it's a really good tip. Again, we're you know we're recording now. It's pitch black outside. It's raining. Uh, when you have something you know to train on, whether it's a treadmill or a bike, whatever it may be, it's a great option. If you have a road bike, uh, you can also get a turbo trainer. Following off from Susie's advice there, where the back of the road bike sits on the the turbo trainer, and you can sync that with uh, tech like Zwift or an online game a gamification platform. But that all sounds very complicated. If you've been really really good this year, ask Santa for a Techno Gym spin bike, and uh, you'll be doing you'll be very happy on christmas day that's for sure Adrian, can i ask I... one quick question about yeah that? go for it as as a, a a fitness novice in terms of training or running or cycling or anything like that if i right as a middle-aged man want to start intensifying my ru- uh, my routine am i better off getting one of those gadgets um or am i better off going outside and but specifically in the context of injury am i more likely to injure myself if i go out running in the rain in the dark and all that? rather than the treadmill at home great question so the answer to that is not necessarily uh some people will do too much on a treadmill or they'll do too much outside if you're starting out the key thing is starting gradually so no actually the answer it, it, it's it's irrelevant whether it's indoor or outdoor uh, assisted or non-assisted in terms of injury and injury prevention key thing there is just not doing too much like everyone around the country in about four weeks time will be a january gym member or a new year's resolution person and they'll do exactly that right they'll go out I'm getting in early yeah, yeah. oh of course right so yeah. or else they'll get, they'll get the hard this program on the spin bike and go like bilio and then get injured and wonder why they get injured because they did the hardest program so no it's all about just building up gradually whether you're indoors or outdoors six to one doesn't really matter adrian back over to you for your number three number three i'm going to go with fujifilm's instax Lynx wide and i'm going for this because i'm a huge camera fan i whether it's on a phone i own almost a dozen cameras. I've spent way too much money on lenses. If you ever notice any of my social media, I'm always taking landscape shots and I'm, I, I spend way too much time uh, photographing things. However, very little of it ever gets published. And it's only when I use one of these instant cameras. This, this isn't an instant camera. It's a small gadget that prints out six by 10 centimeter prints that you can you, you can print from your phone or from an iPad. So you've a lot more control over the type of photos that you end up printing. And as good as a fant- you know an Instagram post with a thousand likes or whatever it is is there's nothing that really there's a feeling you get when you print something out and you see it in in, in printed form it's this might be old fashioned but it it's just unlike it's unlike any other kind of uh, of high or you know for want of a better word you might get from you know a good reception of a photo online and this is just a very nice affordable way it's 149 euro the packs are 22 euro for a pack of 20 so it's about a euro a shot but because you're printing that's good value well because you're printing from your phone 
it means you've much more control. You're much less likely to waste the prints. One of the problems with the point and shoot instant cameras is that uh, sometimes they're they're kind of mad or they're badly lit or whatever. It's sort of you know click and hope. And some people like that. And there is a nice ephemeral thing to that. But uh, I think this is a nice little present. 149 euro Fujifilm Instax Link Wide. And there's nothing like I, I'm like that with books and uh, books and and e-readers. There's nothing like the touch of a book or the feel of a book over an e-reader in terms of just the the romance around the book. I think you're right in terms of the photograph. The photograph is exactly the same thing. When you see it, you touch it. It's there in front of you. It's far more. There's just more to it than than than. And the thing to do with screen. books, like Miles and Agapolin used to do, is you get really impressive sounding ones, right, and have a giant. Uh, a shelf and have ones that you may not have read but they look thumbed through and you add little notes you say like how true how true or i was only <laughs> saying the same to clementine you know uh, last week um, but no I, I agree with you i agree with you it, yeah, there's something there's something nice about, nice just, about that analog you know what it's like bringing it back a little bit which is from 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 the yep. from the tech side of things which is lovely folks you're listening to real health me carl henry in association with Leia healthcare is our christmas gift guide episode lots of lovely different price point gifts so far susie it's back over to you for your fourth uh, recommendation what is it so for my fourth one i was actually going to suggest a um, a voucher for a sports shop and specifically somewhere if you're starting into training that you can get a good gait test done. So I have found that um, I I got a gait test done a few years ago and I was wearing a certain pair of runners for a while and I just got a new one done a few just before I got back into training properly from the run hub and it was brilliant. I'm wearing new runners now and I have found that my running has improved. I'm getting faster Um, the few little niggles that I had before aren't there anymore. So I think because runners are such a personal thing and you need to get that, it might be nice for someone to get a voucher to go and get properly measured up and properly get their gait test done so they can start as they mean to go on and try and minimize any risk of injuries. Um, so that obviously can be for whatever price point someone chooses, but um, anything is good to get you on the road to getting a good pair of runners. I, I, I like, this, well, I like the sound yourself. of that. Uh, I, would, but, I, I was just going to say, Adrian, there is your answer in terms yeah, of injury risk prevention. Get your gait checked. And I hope so. Uh, you know, that's, a re- that's a great present for people. What is a gait? Of, I, I've, so oh, your gait oh, you mean you like your walk walking gait? Oh, sorry. I yeah, see, yeah. So like as opposed to like a gait gait, a gait's how you walk or run. So if you flip mm. your runners over like that, on the, the base of the runner, you'll see the sole. It'll be uh-huh. generally for people, it's overly worn on either the back rear or the back right. Sometimes yeah. it's the front as well. Your, run, your runner should be pretty much evenly worn all the way through the back of the shoe. And if it's not, you need to get your gait checked, uh, like Susie's saying. So you basically walk on a treadmill, run on a treadmill. They look or feel on how you walk or run. Then they recommend a foot or runner to, to suit your foot type so that it's ne- it neutralizes how you walk or run. And it's a so really where, where good where would I prevention. get that done? I have no idea even the first, I wouldn't have the first idea where to. So yeah, there's loads. That. So Amphibian King, Run Hub, uh, uh, there's loads of places you can get that Are done. Are they shops? Yeah, they're all shops. Yeah, there's specific, okay. there's specific shops yeah. for, for runners. Elvery's do do it as well. Uh, so there's a lot of nationwide availability for something like that. But it's a great present for anyone who wants to start walking, hill walking. Foot Solutions do it too for, for people too. It's really important. It's a great idea. Yeah. I'm actually going to take you up on that. Um, how much typically would that cost? That cost uh, me? A lot of them will throw it in as part of the price of the shoe. So it's, you know, if the shoe's 100 euro, it's part of the okay. fitting service for the shoe. So you no longer buy the shoe for like a color or a brand. You now buy it because you get fitted for the shoe. It's really cool. Cool. Really, really good. A- Adrian, right. what's your fourth one? I'm going to go with a soundbar for a TV, specifically yeah. because at the moment where this is the time of year when most people... If you're going to buy a new TV, you typically buy it around Black Friday. The problem with most flat screen TVs, even the posh, expensive OLED ones, is the speakers on them tend to be crap. Now, they're not crap crap. You can make out the news. But if you want to really hear uh, you know, quality from a decent movie, you need some an external speaker. You can spend an absolute fortune on them. Um, you can you know, go for multi-sound uh, systems, subwoofers, all the rest of it. But what most people now do is they get a sound bar. And there are soundbars and soundbars. You can pick up a real budget soundbar for about 50 quid. They go up to about six or 700 uh, euro as well. The one I've picked is in between. It's by JBL. It's called the JBL Bar 5.0 Multibeam. And it costs 279 euro at the moment from Harvey Norman. That's uh, discounted. And essentially, it's plug and play. It's a uh, good uh, sound quality out of it and works with most tellies. Okay, fantastic. Susie, over to you for your fifth and final. So for my final one, um, it's a bit of a boring one, but I still think a necessity. They're little spiky trigger balls um, oh, and yeah. they're nine euro. So these 
are going to be, you have all your stuff now for getting fit and this is going to again keep you from getting sore and getting injured. So um, I always think it's like pleasurable pain rolling these around <laughs> any areas that are kind of tight and um, I just think they're so handy like that to be able to give yourself a little massage at home and just to keep any areas from getting tight and sore. Um, so they're my fifth. And again, for nine euro, that, that's a great stocking filler. And Adrian, basically, when you come in from your run now in January, you have your feet sorted, you have some sore muscles, you put <laughs> those under your under your bum and you roll up and down it and it eases out your muscles. This is incredible. I, this is a real educator. <laughs> I had no idea what a, what is it, a trigger ball? Is that what it's trigger, called? Trigger ball, yeah. I've, I've never heard of that spiky trigger before. balls. So there's three different you're saying, kind of levels as well of how hard you want to go on yourself. Very uh, for nine quid, that is that is a great stocking filler that will ease people's muscles out, and it, it'd be a bit of crack on Christmas Day as well, trying to teach your granny what it, what it, what a spiky trigger ball does. And you know, there's a whole yeah, there's a whole other stories of that. Uh, Adrian, over to you for your fifth one. Yeah, my last one is a slightly dull one, but I was looking at tablets, and a question that I often get asked is, I'm thinking of a tablet A for a family member, like a kid or a grandparent or something, and B for myself and here's here's what you need to know about top so what i picked was the ipad 9 which is the new basic ipad but here's what you need to know about tablets uh, at a certain level under 500 euro 600 euro there is literally no competition to apple none i mean there's a there's a, a large argument to say there's no competition to, to the ipad at any price level they're just so much better the, in terms of the the features they have uh in terms of what they do the iPad 9, it's 399 euros, so it's not cheap. It's not a budget um, tablet, but for what you're getting, it completely knocks the socks off um, any other tablet you can get for uh, for around that price. You can use it with an Apple Pencil as well, which is kind of nice. And it has one huge advantage over the last iPad, which is that it's a much better front-facing camera. So you can use it for proper, decent uh, Zoom calls or FaceTime. Um, and it'll follow you around as well. The camera will follow you around. So that I've seen on. that. I had a client mm -hmm. two weeks ago who got a pro, which has that the follow you around pro, function. Yeah. It mm -hmm. is it's like having your own producer in your house. Because for what I do is online PT, right? Mm -hmm. So the camera moved everything they they did. The camera moved and went and centered them and focused them. It was unbelievable. And it has a lovely effect as well. So the pick the. If the picture is on me or it's on you, it's an ultra wide front facing camera. So if, it, if you move your head right or left, it'll follow you around. If somebody else comes into the screen behind you, it'll widen out the angle to take the two of you in. It's a really kind of it's cool. Absolutely. It's, it's yeah, kind of it's, it's a, a artificial intelligence on a, on a whole new level. Folks, that is it for this week's Real Health. Susie, if people want to follow you online, where can they find you? They can find us um, online at www.ayu.ie or on uh, Instagram at AU Makeup Ireland. Fantastic, Susie. Thank you for your tips and your suggestions. Adrian, when is your, your, your podcast with the end that comes out every week? When's it out? Every Friday. I'm also a Twitter uh, at Adrian Weckler. And also it can be found, there used to be a thing called a newspaper, right? It's this fantastic <laughs> thing that you can buy in shops. You, 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 you actually get it right in your hand there and then. So you can find me there as well. You can you can you can touch it and feel it and read all the content that's in it's it. It's incredible, folks. That is it for another episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. As ever, you know where we are at Carl Henry PT on Twitter and on Instagram and Real Health Independent. Ie. Loads of lovely gift ideas there for the person in your life, from from cheap to very expensive. There's a huge range of gifts to choose from. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week for more Real Health. Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.